So I ask our panelists, is there a better way that we can be leveraging our assistance, perhaps not to the Palestinians themselves, but to the international allies of the Palestinians or, or at the UN? Professor, we'll begin with you about how the, what kicks in the... Uh, okay, so the Palestinians submitted letters of accession to the Rome Statute, joining the Rome Statute, which is purely prospective. They also submitted with that a 12-3 declaration. Uh, a 12-3 declaration is a mechanism to give the court retroactive jurisdiction going back over particular incidents, and they did this back to the, the Gaza war after the three boys were, uh, were kidnapped and killed. When a country joins the ICC, uh, any country can demand, can refer a situation to the prosecutor. It doesn't have to be the countries involved. Any other member country can do so. Uh, now, only the prosecutor actually does the investig uh, investigations, but the process of kicking that off begins with, for example, countries referring such a situation. In the case of the 12-3 declaration, the 12-3 declaration does not require any subsequent follow-up or referral by countries. So it does seem that within the meaning of the uh, existing legislation, the 12-3 declaration, which has resulted in the initial preliminary examination, is the thing that initiated the process. Now, the current legislation speaks, uh, existing legislation speaks of the, uh, uh, the Palestinians initiating a judicially authorized investigation. So there's two parts of that to parse, initiating and judicially authorized. Now, clearly the steps they've taken can count as initiating. Obviously, the Palestinians themselves don't work at the ICC, so they can't be the ones to actually sign off on the investigation. And if it actually means opening an investigation at the ICC, it would be reading the legislation to be meaningless if it would require the Palestinians doing that, since they can't do that because they're not part of the ICC. Uh, the question of a judicially authorized investigation is a separate question, because after the prosecutor uh, conducts, uh, uh, completes her preliminary examination, which involves questions like jurisdiction, just a very basic questions, is there anything to think about here, uh, she can then go to the pretrial chamber, a body of the ICC, and ask them for authorization to, uh, to open an investigation. The statute could be read to think that that's what actually triggers the aid cutoff, because that's what a judicially authorized investigation is, but it's already been initiated. You, it's consistent with the intent of the legislation to say that the first step of this process is what is going to initiate it, and that step has indeed been taken. However, there are other steps that can be taken against, uh, about funding uh, under existing legislation. Uh, if, I may, uh, briefly, uh, if I may briefly add, uh, existing statutes provide no funds authorized to be appropriated under uh, this or any act shall be available for the United Nations or any specialized agency which accords the PLO the same standing as member states. Now, it's important to point out that this statute, unlike other ones, does not speak of membership. It doesn't say if the UN gives membership to the PLO or to the Palestinians, rather if it gives them standing otherwise enjoyed by member states. 